Hi folks, Nick here back at my desk doing some homework for us so we can get ready for the week so we're not winging it. First, I'll tell you what I'm looking for for the last two weeks, including this coming week. Change in behavior. So far, we have been, quote, buying the dip, which means every time we have a red day like on Friday or a red week, we bounce and make a higher high very fast. So that's what we're looking for this week. Is there a change in behavior? I don't expect it. I should just wait and watch. If I expect it, then I'm guessing and I'm jumping the gun. Last week was red and for the small caps, it was the hardest, minus 2%, the NASDAQ minus 0.7, the other two reddish, you know, flattish red. So uh, Friday was red for the indices. We're looking at a weekly chart of all the indices here. Um, we have the S&P that has had two indecisive weeks. You can hardly see the change. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Uh, the NASDAQ, we can see slightly redder candles right there two weeks in a row so maybe relative weakness here as far as the um, small caps indecision candle two weeks ago last week big red one minus two percent the Dow yeah can't really tell it's led by massive companies that move it these are the daily charts and I'm going to show you what I mean by a change in behavior so we have had dips this is the S&P that resulted in a higher high you can see them going backwards this is a dip. See how Friday was bad. And will they make a higher high or will they make a lower low than this one? So it's very simple. They either rally 1.8 or more percent or fall 1.6 percent, which happens first. That would be just a mini sign. Same thing here on the NASDAQ, same thing here on the small caps, same thing here on the Dow to varying degrees. Look left a little bit more. This is an even lower time frame. You can see how we had the same pattern, like choppy, looks like a head and shoulders. If you had anticipated a lower low here, you would have lost money because they rallied super hard. Same here, look left, these look like these. It is important for me to pick up on Apple since I highlighted last week. Um, it is still bearish, they're trying to make headway. Apple needs to rally above 177 to even have a chance. There are a lot of sellers as it approaches 180. So it's still in the bearish scenario. Google, on the other hand, rallied fiercely. You can see how it bounced hard. NVIDIA could be a wild one. It is uh, so tight. You have a higher low, you have a lower high coming to a pinpoint. Be on the lookout for big moves from NVIDIA and it might drag the market with it. Weird uh, spike from Microsoft and then it gave it all back up. I say that there is support. So if it drops to 408, it's a tradable support assuming the week is docile. Now that we've seen the components, let's talk about the potential catalysts this week. Uh, this is a summary of the activities this week. I'm going to focus our attention to one thing and one thing only. We have the interest rate decision from the Fed. So they meet two days, Tuesday and Wednesday, in the middle of Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern. They will tell us their decision. Nobody's surprised as to what they're going to do, which is probably nothing. But the words that he has in the question and answer session that will probably be more important than the decision itself. I will trade the aftermath better than anticipating which way it's going to go first because trading before i'd be guessing trading after i'll be reacting with some information in hand we also still have a few important uh, earnings reports like for example nike fedex those are important for the economy micron is going to be important for the semis and their sales have not been great so i'd be interested to see what they have to say so whatever i do this week i should be um, unemotional about it if i'm a bear i should control my emotions if they rally I shouldn't just short for the sake if I'm a bull I shouldn't feel too comfortable chasing every spike be careful out there